Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kyla. Sorry about last week y'all. It was a lot going on but I'm super excited to be back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about fasting. Before I get into that video, um, shout out to my UK audience. I didn't even know I was in the UK. That's pretty cool. That's a place that I really want to go to. Really want to go to London. Okay y'all. So hit me up. But anyway, I'm super excited to be reaching different parts of the world sitting right from my room and I hope to travel to a lot of these places that this YouTube channel is reaching. So if you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure you do that below. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm always super excited to have you. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So first let's talk about what is fasting. Um, fasting is basically the act of denying your flesh. It's a process of submitting to God by denying your body of um, food is what I'm specifically going to be talking about today. So I know sometimes people fast from things like social media, like I did a fast from social media back um, last November or something like that for about a month. And um, it was cool, but one of the really effective ways to fast is by abstaining from food. And there are different types. Some people do um, fruit and vegetable fast, where they only eat fruit and vegetables for a certain period of time. Some people only do all liquid fast. Some people do no liquids and no food, which is called a dry fast. That one is real intense, y'all, okay? But the whole point of fasting is to deprive your body, your flesh of something and feed yourself with the word. During this time, you'll be able to hear from God clearer. You'll be able to get answers that you couldn't get when you were... Um, when your flesh was kind of running rampant and running in control. And it is a great way to increase the strength of the Holy Spirit within you. So you want your spirit to be stronger than your flesh. You never want your flesh to be stronger than your spirit. And by flesh, I mean like your sinful nature, all of your like lustful desires, all the, the greedy things. Like that's, that's the flesh. My apostle always says the flesh is a mess and it can't be blessed. And I totally understand what he means by that because it's really important that we put our flesh under control and we constantly submit ourselves to God. So fasting is a great way to do that. And I will leave an article below on some more benefits of fasting but today I really want to talk about um, how to make your fasting more effective fasting is something that I do often it's my weekly part of my routine I'm always fasting about something because like for example last week I was really struggling with like anxiety and like insecurity and stuff like that concerning something that God called me to do and so in order my flesh was feeling all those feelings my flesh was feeling insecure my flesh was feeling anxious and so I knew that the, those weren't feelings that came from God so I had to put my flesh under control so I went on a food fast where I didn't eat from um, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. and um, I just drank water and um, basically I just filled myself with the word of God I prayed I, I read the word um, I journal I listened to God to see what he had to say to me I meditated on the scripture these are all things that I do um, when I'm fasting so now let's go ahead and get into four tips for effective fasting so my first tip is to set aside a specific time to pray. Because our days can be so hectic, as um, soon as you get up, things start moving. Like you get on the phone, then you got a meeting, and then you got all these things to do. And sometimes like even when you're fasting, it can be hard to like remind yourself to pray because you get caught up in the hustle and bustle of your day. So one of the things that I do is I actually plan the day before I know I'm about to fast, what times I'm gonna pray. So for me, that looks like praying as soon as I get up in the morning, I try to get up between six and seven. Sometimes y'all, it just don't work, but I try to pray as soon as I get up in the morning and then I pray in the midday, so around like 12 is a good time to pray because it's usually like my lunch break and I know that I can have that quiet designated time for God. And then I will pray at the end of my fast to close out the fast and thank God for all that he's done. Thank him for everything that I've learned. Sometimes I'll get the answer that I'm looking for um, closer to the end of my fast, so it's always good to wrap it up with praise and worship. Um, of course, you set the times that work best for you, but just remembering to actively set that time. Like, this is my time with God. This is the time that I'm going to pray. You don't want to just be going throughout your day, like starving yourself because you didn't set time away to pray. Like, fasting and prayer go together. You don't just fast without praying. I mean, you do that for health reasons, but when you're fasting um, for spiritual reasons to get closer to God, you have to make sure that you're praying. So be intentional about the time that you set. So my second tip is to actually write down the expectations for your fast. Um, this is something I started doing recently. I did this when I fasted um, for discipline. I was trying to be more disciplined and consistent in my um, quiet time with God. And so I actually fasted about that. And so one of the things I did was I wrote down like a list of three things that I was expecting to gain from that fast. I wrote those down before my fast. That way by the end of my fast, I could go back and reflect on what God had shown me, what I had learned and make sure that I was, you know, I had a focus for the fast and I wasn't just, um, 
to make sure that I had a focus for a fast and I wasn't just all over the place. You want to be really intentional. So when you're going to your quiet time to seek God, you're getting the answers that you're actually looking for and not just kind of going out without a plan. It's like you don't get in your car without a destination. So you don't pray and fast without setting expectations for what you want. My third tip for effective fasting is um, avoiding social media if you can. In the past, even though I was fasting from food, I would get on social media. But what I realized is that um, because there's so much going on on social media, there's so much information that you're you know, collecting every single moment that you scroll, it can honestly be distracting and it can drown out the voice of God. When you're fasting, you want to really be consecrating yourself and focusing only on the Lord. That way, when you're, you can hear him clearly, there's so many voices trying to speak to us. We have voices from our family, our friends, social media. And it's really, this is really a time where you want to block out all of the noise and really get dialed in on what God is saying to you. You want to get quiet. Sometimes we spend so much time praying that we actually forget to sit and be quiet in that time. So have your time for prayer, but also make sure you're having just quiet time where you're listening to what God has to say. I do this by just getting out my journal and I just literally just sit there and I'm quiet. I'll start worshiping and then I'll just get quiet and wait for him to tell me you know, what's on his mind, like what he has to say. He's always speaking. It's just like, are we getting quiet enough to hear him? So social media, I would avoid it as best as you can because it is a big distraction for when you're fasting and praying. My last tip for effective fasting is to be obedient even when it gets hard. Often sometimes I will fast and I will get an answer that I didn't really want to hear, but I understand that you know a part of fasting and prayer and seeking God is being prepared to receive an answer or, or receive direction that you necessarily don't want to do or um didn't think that he was going to say but that's often like what happens when you seek God it's usually not the thing that you want to hear but it's the thing that's best for you and so some of those decisions or some of the direction that he will give you may be difficult but this isn't the time to to turn off God's voice you've now intentionally sought him for whatever you're fasting for and he's giving you the answer so even when it's difficult you don't want to stop right there you want to continue to push through so that you can actually see the manifestation of your fasting So yes, be obedient even when it gets hard. You've been intentional about seeking the Lord. And so whatever direction that he's going to give you, you want to make sure that you're following it and you're not trying to do things on your own. There's no point in fasting and praying and seeking the Lord if you're not going to do what he's told you to do. That is how you're going to get, you know, the desired outcome. This is a part of submitting to God and following his plan for your life. The last thing I wanted to mention is to actually find scriptures for whatever you're fasting about. So if you're fasting about discipline, then you want to find scriptures focused on discipline. That way you have you know exactly what you're reading. Again, planning is really important when you're fasting and praying because so much goes on through the day. So be intentional about you know the scriptures. If you even have to Google like uh, scriptures for discipline, scriptures for insecurity, scriptures for surrendering control, scriptures for rejection, whatever you're fasting about, make sure that you know what you're reading in the Bible. Because again, the whole point of fasting is to replace that food with the word of God. You want to literally consume the word of God and that is what is going to strengthen you. So I hope those tips were helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And until then, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys in the next video.